as of this morning, the National Hurricane Center upgraded Hurricane Ian to a Category 3 storm, which means that's about 125 mile an hour winds. Ian is moving toward western Florida at approximately 12 miles per hour. And at this time, we are expecting landfall somewhere between Fort Myers and Tampa. By the time it reaches the shores of Florida, the storm is going to slow down to approximately five miles per hour. And this is significant because what this means is that Floridians are going to experience the impacts from this storm for a very long time. I can tell you that our biggest concern as we uh, wait for this storm to make landfall is storm surge. And I will note that storm surge is a leading cause of hurricane related fatalities. Just in 2018, when Hurricane Michael impacted the Florida Panhandle, there were five recorded fatalities as a result of storm surge. So therefore, if people are told to evacuate by their local officials, please listen to them. The decision you choose to make may mean the difference between life and death. We won't just see storm surge, though, on the western coast of Florida. Hurricane Ian's path is also going to bring some storm surge to the eastern coast, somewhere near the Daytona to the Jacksonville area. In addition to the storm surge, we are also going to see significant rainfall, with the possibility of up to 25 inches in some isolated parts of Florida. And as always, there's always a possibility for tornadoes. So the main message I have for everyone in Florida is that this is going to impact everyone in different ways. So you need to stay focused. I did speak with Governor DeSantis on Friday to hear his main concerns and his priorities for the response and the preparedness actions. And we immediately began moving resources and personnel in. And President Biden signed Governor DeSantis's pre-landfall emergency declaration request on Saturday. This made sure that we were able to immediately start supporting the governor's concerns that he relayed to me. The preparation for this storm has been extensive and it has been coordinated. It has been a coordinated effort between FEMA, our federal, our state, and our nonprofit partners. So a little bit about some of that forward-leaning posture that we've put in place. Search and rescue, we know that this is going to be a priority. We have established a search and rescue coordination group that's going to be in Miami, and it includes uh, members from FEMA's ur urban search and rescue teams, the Coast Guard, the Department of Defense, the Department of the Interior, as well as the state of Florida. These teams are going to coordinate search and rescue efforts by land, by air, and by sea. We have also pre-staged 128,000 gallons of fuel for immediate deployment. And we have moved a variety of generators of all sizes and types to help restore power to critical infrastructure after the storm passes. The Army Corps of Engineers has also pre-staged 300 personnel to conduct power and fuel assessments as soon as the storm passes. And we have 3.7 million meals and 3.5 million liters of water that are staged in Alabama. <clears throat> there are also multiple volunteer organizations that are postured and prepared to support feeding operations as soon it is, as it is safe to do so. The Red Cross, they have established 29 shelters right now for evacuees, and they are also prepared to open an additional 60 shelters if needed. And we have 200 ambulances from our FEMA contract that are already in the state working side by side with local officials, and we have four medical, federal medical teams on standby. So while we are postured and ready to support Florida as they prepare for the impacts of Hurricane Ian, I want to make clear that FEMA's ongoing support to Puerto Rico's recovery efforts from Hurricane Fiona, as well as Alaska's recovery from Typhoon Murbach, is still ongoing. We remain focused on helping Puerto Rico restore critical services like power and water, and our staff remain engaged with families to help them through the application process. And I'm happy to say just now that the final four municipalities in Puerto Rico were just added for individual assistance, so now the entire Commonwealth has that available to them. Our teams in Alaska are also helping the state complete damage assessments and addressing uh, emergency repairs as the state is preparing for their near freeze-up they're nearing freeze up as the winter season approaches. As far as Hurricane Ian's path, it has become more defined, but as with any hurricane, it can still be unpredictable. This means that it is more important than ever that communities inside and outside of that projected path that you see, that you stay vigilant. And so my message to those who may be watching at home, get ready and do not underestimate 
the potential that this storm can bring. Know where you are going to get your information. Listen to your local officials and heed their advice. They are trying to keep you safe. Have a plan to communicate with your family. Finally, uh, FEMA and our partners are here. We are ready and we are focused on meeting the needs of those that we are charged to serve, but we need the help of everyone that we are charged, that everyone at home, to be as prepared as they can be. I am confident that we have the right team in place as we work this emergency response to Hurricane Ian, and together we have the capability to meet whatever threats may come our way.